All right, I wanted to make a quick video of my do-it-yourself and home ownership or home maintenance toolbox. These are, I do not use these tools professionally, but these are the tools I've ended up with after 20 years of doing it yourself projects and home maintenance. So they are kind of a hodgepodge. There's not really a general theme, but I know every single one of these tools and how they work. I've definitely bought cheaper and then replaced with better, better tools. And um, usually I'll get rid of the tool that is either broken or being replaced just to keep my setup a little bit more streamlined and have less clutter. And so I'll try to just talk about which cheaper tools I've replaced as well as which tools to uh, spend more on and where I found that it was better to buy the more expensive one from the get-go and where it was probably better to just keep the cost effective one. And again, I do not use any of these tools professionally or that regularly for that matter, but it's just a matter of, it's just for my home do-it-yourself projects and home maintenance. And as you can see, not all the tools are in the same location. There's a ladder, still counts as a tool. We'll go over that. And these are some of the projects it's helped me with. I've installed struts changed oil, built an entire bicycle frame up, battery organization, replaced sink garbage disposals or in-sink aerators, installed water filters for my refrigerator, built very crude speaker stands, put together a mini, mini, mini home gym, built and maintained RC cars, Removed doors and, and replaced seal ceiling. Built close to 20 computers. Made my own desk surface. Built an entire swing set by myself. Obviously it was a kit, but I still put it together with everything I have. Replaced the sump pump and installed a check valve. Not in this house, but a previous house, wired 220 or 240 volts. Mowed my own lawn. Maintained multiple bicycles. Did not recharge my AC, but did clean it out. Sawed down one of these pine trees myself. There's the rest of it that you see it to be burnt. And there's some of it that's left over. All right, now when I'm going through these tools, I'm gonna break them down into, yes, tools you abs absolutely, I think you should have, uh, may the tools maybe you should have, and then probably don't need because they're only useful for advanced projects. All right, starting here, we have a 3 16 flathead screwdriver. This is a made in the USA Husky. And then this is a larger one. This is 1 fourth. This one you probably don't need. I like it because it gets to tight areas. And then there's a Phillips two, Phillips one, Phillips two, a bit holder. And then a beater Phillips. I think you absolutely need one. You have a nice Phillips head, but then you're always gonna end up using a beater Phillips head screwdriver or any screwdriver for, as a, pry bar or to get into an area to kind of pry something apart. Not the correct tool, but you, when you need one, you're going to reach for one. Or uh, even, for example, taking out door pins. You're going to probably put this in there to get door pins out. You don't want to damage the nice tips of your uh, better screwdrivers. Here we go. It's a, I use this a ton for soldering um, terminals on my battery packs for my radio control cars. And I... It, it's, uh, I guess it's out. This must be out, huh? But it's a little blowtorch. I guess I have to replace this. And then this is another thing for getting into... This you don't need. Blowtorch. Advanced, so probably don't need that. Measure tape as a must. I have two. I don't know why. Um, then a bunch of bits. Bits are very important bit holder 
And then a micro set of screwdrivers, uh, absolutely important. I have had the junkie set before. If you're only going to do occasional stuff, that's fine. But if you're going to be working on some small, small items, um, I have hex metric for my remote control cars. And I have all these for minute work, like uh, computer building or what have you. Here's a set of t drill bits. And they have a larger set of drill bits, but I just for an easy access, this is one of the items I have a repeat of because going down and reaching my, pulling out my big bit set is a headache. And most of you just need to drill a hole. I have a quick, quick pull. This is one of my favorite set of tools. It's a Bondus uh, set of metric Allen keys. Um, if you're gonna do work on a bike or maintenance, I would say absolutely don't skimp out on Allen keys. Cheap, mental, cheap quality or cheap metal quality Allen keys suck. I had a set of Huskies. Those are actually pretty good. The Husky Allen keys, I think they're made in Taiwan, but these are Bondus Allen keys made in the US and they're definitely significantly better. The fit is better and they don't round out as, as quickly. Um, a set of scissors here. Just a regular pair of scissors is such a must in a toolbox. I use this more than probably, almost more than anything. And then uh, wire cutters. Yes, I say this is needed if you're gonna do it yourself, but maybe nothing this heavy. This is a really, really heavy duty set. You could get one size smaller than this. Um, these scissors are cool scissors that I thought I would like. They're by the company Engineer. They're made in Japan. They're really high quality. They're not ergonomic. They don't use them as much as I would like, but they're really sharp and really good. But uh, I wouldn't buy these again. Pointy nose pliers, absolute must. These are Tsundas. I think if you're just, I bought nicer pairs. This is probably, um, if you're gonna buy a pair of pointy nose pliers and you use them often, I would get a nice set because of, mainly because of how how they line up. And you see these line up real nice. And so it makes their pleasure to use, especially when doing really fine work. Here's a larger set of pointy nose pliers. If I was gonna just have one, I would probably have the smaller set. Um, the larger I don't actually use as much. If I need a larger set of, there's ne I've never had a time where I need the larger set of pointy nose pliers as, for, um, as opposed to this smaller set. And when I need pointy nose pliers, I'm doing something fine. And so I need the dexterity, the, a small one so if you're going to get just again i'm not a professional but uh at home ownership i found these a uh, pair of trauma sh like shears or scissors these are really good because then if you don't want to mess up mess up your fine scissors and you need to cut something a little bit heavier such as um, when i was cutting and when i made my uh, air filtration system for my computer uh, so I wouldn't have dust inside. I have a video on that if you want to check it out. When I cut through the uh, home air filters, um, they have this metal mesh to give the rigidity to the air filter mem uh, component. And this would, it would have destroyed these scissors. And, they were t and so I needed this to cut through the metal, metal wiring uh, without, and cut through the uh, air filter fabric and where these would have been uh, too much of an overkill. So this is like a halfway point between these and these. I think uh, these you probably don't need. You only really need these if you're doing advanced stuff. I'm not advanced, but I just thought I should have a pair. Um, you may find that you need them, but definitely should have this. This one you can get by with just using cutters on um, the, the pointy nose pliers. Or uh, a set of, um, uh, what are these? These are basically other set of pliers. These, so this is an absolute must. And in my opinion, you should have two sizes. Here you have one in a 10 inch. And I have one in an 8 inch. Um... These, so this is just, this shouldn't be the primary tool you're using for everything, but in case you need to hold, hold another side of a fastener, 
then and you don't want to get a second separate separate socket or you don't have combination wrenches these can work for just you know a single do-it-yourself project absolutely do not need these i don't think i've ever used these they're so humongous these are linesman pliers um, bigger set of pointy nose pliers i think if you before buying something like this i would get uh, a small and big version of pointy nose pliers absolutely you need this this thing is used for prying open paint cans scraping stuff poking stuff um, just to sh place into two pieces of wood and try to pry a little so basically a pry pry bar uh, absolutely need these this is a set of um, I don't know what you call these challenge rule locks or monkey wrench uh, need that it's basically adjustable and they can really lock down and then there's a release absolutely need this a pair of wire strippers these are made i had a junkier set which i still i might but these were made in the u.s by klein tools if you're going to get a pair of wire strippers get these they're basic they're made in the u.s the metal is good doesn't and it just lasts forever um oh another mini set of pointy nose pliers this is something i found on the ground somewhere this is a pretty junky set but i find myself reaching for these more than i expected i would and so they live up there now this don't you don't i don't think you need to buy these this is basically if you have a stripped stripped bolt and you're trying to get it out you can really grab on it these are made in japan engineer they're the vampire rebranded vampires i believe engineer makes these for vampires and these are rebranded um absolutely need a pair of these from whichever company you get it uh adjustable adjustable pliers um and so i had a pair from husky that i keep in my vehicle now but i bought a more a better set from made in japan so the already talked about the uh adjustable wrench and these are wire cutters now these are hidden back here but it's because they're too long but absolutely should get a pair of um, channel locks i don't think you need to buy the 40 dollars made in germany i did i don't need it but you should have a pair of these um not, not necessarily this expensive i don't think this wasn't necessary to buy i've used this like a few times but when you need it you need it and it, um, it's just to grab on larger stuff absolutely need a hammer this one you can't get around don't necessarily need an s-wing but um, I, have, I, I believe you, if you're just doing it for do-it-yourself projects, 16 ounces is adequate. 20 ounces is a little heavy. I, need, I don't think I've ever needed more than 16 ounces in everything I've done. Absolutely need a pair of, oh, sorry, not a pair. Absolutely need some um, box cutters. Buy the most basic kind, in my opinion. Get Stanley. I mean, this is a hard, I only need one, but uh out of the two of these this is a harbor freight two dollar one on the bottom this is like a five dollar stanley one definitely get the stanley one just this is a sharp cutting tool you want it to ratchet nicely you don't want it to come apart um and and you just want it to function as designed so you don't injure yourself don't skimp on this i mean five to three bucks you're not breaking the bank there this is see it doesn't it's not as it is more vague and and so I never, given the choice, I will never reach for these two. Even if I had this one and I came across this, I would upgrade and replace it in a heartbeat. Now, this is just like a miscellaneous thing. Toothbrush, absolutely need an old toothbrush to clean stuff. Uh, magnetic light, that's super necessary. Um, ooh, a Bic lighter, that's super necessary. Bic... Uh, and then so pencils to do stuff, a little sharpener. This is a cool sharpener. This is made in Germany. Mag magnesium alloy and it's got replaceable blades. Um, the company has come. But this is cool. And then X-Acto, X-Acto knife. This is necessary for little projects. Also, in terms of poking prodding, I always keep something like this. You never know when you have to poke something through or clean something out um, and you need something skinny. And another thing I found super helpful are bike spoke. What's this? Oh, this is not a bike spoke. But I do keep a bike spoke here. Yeah, a, a bike spoke because these bike spokes 
make excellent makeshift tools. We need to poke something. These are super stiff. They're really, they have good um, rigidity. And so some things to poke prod, pass things through, clean out holes. Um, basic ruler, very, very helpful. In spite of having a measuring tape, you don't always need to measure something that's freaking 25 feet long. So I keep a 12 inch ruler, I even keep a small, uh, and then you need another like flexible ruler in case you need to wrap around something. And then this is a regular six inch ruler, uh, probably redundant, but it's helpful. And anything else I have in here? A couple other blades to just cut stuff. This is necessary. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, Sharpie, you need that in your toolbox. Carpenter's pencil. Don't not need this unless you're woodworking. I don't ever use this. I found this somewhere on the ground and I just keep it, but I always end up grabbing a regular pencil. Because guess what? You can sharpen it with a little sharpener. You don't need to go get a pair of the, uh, cutters out to you know actually sharpen this. I guess they do sell sharpeners for this, but what in the world? I'm not a professional. I don't use this every day. Unnecessary. Um, absolutely necessary. Super glue. Absolutely necessary. Three in one oil. Absolutely necessary. WD 40. Little can. In fact, I have a couple. And, one. and then these are redundant, actually. These are all metric, metric socket sets, impact driver socket sets. The only reason I bought these is so um, I could do work on my vehicle without having without having to pull out. So this is an ergonomic. This redundancy is an ergonomic issue. Um, so I found is these are made from the bought from Harbor and Freight for I think twenty bucks or less. And so I just didn't want to have to pull my socket set down here out. And this is absolutely necessary too. I didn't want to have to pull the socket set out um, every time I needed it. So. I actually even bought another socket wrench. Absolutely necessary. Not This is redundant. I have one of these, which I thought I would use. It has all sorts of flexible handles and you can get into angles. Don't buy this. It's so, so, and I won't say gimmicky, but um, whenever you're trying to torque on something where it's bent, you always, you end up losing force and this flips in the wrong direction. Maybe I'm not using it properly, but since I've purchased this, I've never used it. And anytime I've tried to use it, I've just put it away and went and got the regular socket with either extensions or swivel heads, the swivel socket. And that's worked for me. Other people might find that this is helpful. I have not. Uh, I wish I never bought this. And for this socket, socket wrench, do not buy the junkiest quality. Buy the, uh, get, get a decent one. Cause the way it ratches it, this head is nice and thin to get into tight, tight areas. And this is of all the, of, I actually bought a second one for my toolkit has, my socket set has this, it came with this one. And I bought a second one cause I like it so much. Um, this is one of the, um, because of the head, it's so thin and it's got a, um, I think 120, 20 t ratchet poles. And then this is also redundant. It's a mini socket up here, so I don't have to get the big socket out. It was like 80 or 90% of what I do, I'll be able to accomplish with this mini socket. Um, this is a Pittsburgh one. And this came with a really, really junky one. I've replaced a lot of these sockets over the years with better sockets. And if you notice, I keep these in here because as I mentioned, this is redundant. And so the main sockets I use in here, I even added some like a 14 and a 12 because I use them millimeter. Those are also redundant. So I don't have to keep going down here and pulling the big socket set out. And, uh, I use, and I can use it quickly with the impact wrench. So those are things to have on the grip. Of course, absolutely necessary, a good pair of gloves. These are already kind of old. And so now I'm on my, I can't remember what set this is, but I mean, these are for really, really dirty work. And then I'll use my not so old ones for something that's not as dirty. And then flashlight, absolutely necessary. Going into these drawers, this is, I almost never use this, but this is a um, Allen key set that's in uh, standard. 
not metric. Um, this is more of a hardware item, but Teflon tape for sealing pipes necessary. All sorts of glues and adhesives. So I, every adhesive has a different property. Um, so this is more of like a rubber cement. Cyanoacrylate is uh, this right here. Obviously, I use that a lot. This is my favorite cyanoacrylate preparation by Loctite Super Glue. I've tried this one and Crazy Glue. I've tried other ones or off brands. You know, they get brittle over time. They don't seem to hold as well. So my, if I'm saying get a Super Glue, this is, this is Loctite Super Glue made in Ireland. Is it? I could have swore it was. Anyways, the Crazy Glue variant of cyanoacrylate. Um, actually called Crazy Glue with a K is made in Japan. That one's really good. Uh, these are absolutely necessary. Loctite thread lockers, red and blue. Absolutely necessary in my opinion. I've like, I, I learned the hard way. I've spent so much time, you know, keep tightening bolts, but then, you know, some stuff that's metal on metal and you think it might loosen over, loose out over time and it's small item, put this blue stuff on there, it never comes off. And if it's a heavy duty item, put the red stuff on. This work uh, epoxy. That's also this. This is great. Um, and then JB Weld. It's another type of epoxy. I don't really have any preference between the two. Of these I haven't even opened these yet. These suck. Don't buy the cheap super glue. Um, all right. Now, micro bit set. This is a five dollar thing. Is absolutely adequate if you're going to use it once a year or twice a year. But if you're going to work on radio control cars re regularly, definitely get the. Oh, this is not. Definitely get the. Um, uh, come on, focus there. There you get you get the hex, hex the nice hex stuff. Uh, that's that's. Uh, and so I, you see, it looks unorganized, but all of the Phillips and flats are pointed in this direction and all the hexes are pointed in this direction. Works for me. Okay, um, these I should have never bought. I think I accidentally bought these actually. I meant to buy the short ones and I ended up buying the long ones. I've never used these. I think I've used it once and I didn't even have to. I've never used these, but they're awesome. They're we, these are all Weeha tools, um, not necessary. But I like to get measurements on stuff. This is, um, we'll see what else. So micro bit sets, if you're working on stuff for super regular, uh, this is like a $40 set of micro bits, unnecessary. Double-sided tape, very necessary. Standard, have to have a standard set, but I've never used them, except for like the disposal when it gets clogged, but it actually comes with a tool. Um, this is just another set of calipers. All right, this is my fun drawer. So Dremel tool, eh, I find it pretty useful, but not necessary for just like a general do it yourself. It's more for like projects. Uh, although I have caught quite a bit of stuff with that. Um, if you're doing soldering iron, absolutely necessary. I couldn't live without this. I had a really junky one that was Weller. I replaced it with this Japanese company. It's not actually made in Japan, but it's a Japanese company called, I don't know, but it's, it's good. Here, you guys can look it up if you want. All right, this is my dad's old voltmeter uh, that I've kept it, but I rarely ever use this because I just use a digital one. Um, but volt, so this is not necessary, but a voltmeter is necessary. I, this is a, my favorite one. I actually have bought this twice. It is an Innova 3320. Um, these is my little soldering kit slash station. What is this? Solder, solder paste. And these are little things to hold wires together when you're soldering so you don't burn your fingers. Um, and there's some solder right there. Necessary, absolutely necessary. I, all right, now this is kind of a hodgepodge drawer. Um, I know the, volve, the my newer voltmeter, demagnetor, unnecessary. Caulk gun, depends on the project. Necessary, unnecessary. 
oil filter removal tool. Absolutely necessary for changing your own oil. Uh, battery chargers. File, absolutely necessary. I don't know why. I always find myself needing to file something to get it to fit or... Staple gun, unnecessary. I'm old, I've bought these, I almost never use them. Uh, snap ring pliers. I don't know. When you need them, you need them, and you wish you had them. I've used them once. I'm glad I had them. They're only like four bucks, but unnecessary. Unnecessary. Uh, pipe cutters. Necessary when you need them. I've never, I've used them once or twice. All right, the big tools. Um, don't use a old bike handle as a breaker bar. I still do, um, but you shouldn't because look at that. I didn't get hurt. It actually just split. This is aluminum. That's dangerous, but I still use it, but you shouldn't. <clears throat> Not recommended. But you should get something long sort of pipe like this, preferably made out of steel. So you can, uh, I, use, I have to use this all the time. I'm not a big guy, so um, I've even, I even use it on this. Not recommended, but you know what I'll do? Look how much longer this thing is now, so. Do not spend a lot of money on this, but you should should probably have one. When you want to hit, hit, close a paint can or hit, break, break a, get, get rotors out of your vehicle without damaging the rotors or risking something flying off and getting you in the eye, you should not use this when you need a mallet. This isn't a mallet, this is a dead blow hammer, but whatever. Just hear the sand in there? But yeah, I, I need this. 20 ounce hammer, it's actually 19, but it swings like a 20 or 22 or something like that. Don't need this, but I like it. Do not need this. I was able to take the entire tree down earlier that I showed you earlier in this video. Not using this, not using this. Um, unless you're doing woodwork, don't buy this. I barely ever use this. This, absolutely do buy. This is a hacksaw. I wouldn't get the heavier. If I could go over and do this again, I don't use it that often. I would have got like the really streamlined five, seven dollar version. This one is nice, but it's just heavy. And you, as long as you get enough tension on the blade with the other one, basically like the one you see in your grandpa's toolbox or your dad's toolbox, that's sufficient. The one that looks like this, but bigger. Don't need the little one. Never use this. Barely ever use this. I have used this. Um, that tree I took down with this, absolutely get this. If you have any sort of yard and you're going to need to trim bushes, I took that entire pine tree down with this. Yes, there was climbing involved. Yes, it was unsafe, but this is a, not a chainsaw replacement, but a chainsaw alternative. This is the silky made in Japan, big boy saw, gone boy 2000. This thing's wicked. It was 80 bucks. And, and I mean, it's just, this is one of the best things I've absolutely buy this if you have a yard. Alternative is cool. All right, we'll see what do we have here. Do not buy this unless you're camping or you, this is not, this is unsafe and it doesn't actually help you get some, although I did use it. I think I did. Eh, you can get this, maybe, plus minus. If you're actually gonna cut stuff, you're actually gonna take trees down, limbs down, you're gonna do use this every time. This is unsafe. You're swinging this around, barely making cuts. You make four or five passes with this is controlled and safe. This is necessary. How many times have I used this to pull up flooring, pull up, pry something open, what have you? Um, does it doesn't need it needs a pry bar? It doesn't necessarily need to be the expensive one by S swing, but a pry bar, not an expensive pry bar. Now. I think these are necessary. I was really on the fence whether to get the set of these three. They come in a pack, these three Husky screwdrivers. But you know what? It's They're pretty useful, especially this one for putting in stuff and prying like a rough-use screwdriver. They have these hammering ends. And so this I use not as screwdrivers, which you're not supposed to, but I use them pretty much as mini pry bars. 
Not intended use, but everybody uses flathead screwdrivers, pry bars. So yes, necessary. Maybe not, maybe not three, but it came in a pack of three. I would only, I only really wanted one. I only really wanted one flathead, long, big flathead as a pry bar, but it came in a pack of three and it was like the cheapest option, so I got it. A sh blade sharpener for the lawnmower, necessary. What else? Okay, stud finder. Where's my stud finder? Here it is. I, this is so much more effective than an actual stud finder. I wrote a stud finder on it because why would you ever look at this? Oh, where's a stud? I mean, I can see it here in my garage, but there you go. Magnetic. Boom. This is neo. This is harvested from an old hard drive. Any neodymium magnet will do. Why? It's in the plastic. So I don't mar up the wall when I'm looking for a stud. That is so much more effective than any sort of stud finder, in my opinion. So I don't have a stud finder anymore because this is better for my use. You may, your miles may vary. I don't like bulky extra stuff that needs to be maintained. That's never going to not be magnetic. And I never had to change the batteries and it doesn't take up any room at all. And there's a lot more stud finders. But these are very useful when you need to make you know, need, when you need a magnet for something. This is absolutely necessary. I've used these as shims to fix stuff. I've used it to um, mix paint. I use this to fix my front door. There's a gap. There's a gap between the bottom of the door and there's a draft. And I just need it. I need it just this much to get the seal to work. Good luck trying to find this thick, this, you know, this thickness piece of wood anywhere. So I cut a couple of these, or I took a couple of these and put a, you know, what did I do? I think I screwed them onto the bottom of the door and then fastened the seal to that. And it's been perfect ever since. So there's, sometimes you just need to be creative. I use this tool as a hardware. What are you going to do? All right. Now, moving on to the bottom here. Um, unnecessary, do not buy this. I'll, uh, you know, this is like a mini handheld shop vac. It dumps batteries like within less than 10 minutes, but it's, it's useful. I wouldn't buy it again. A homeowner for a garage blowing, blowing leaves out, absolutely necessary. All right, if you've noticed, I have DeWalt and Ryobi. Uh, these are all proprietary, they all take their proprietary lithium ion batteries. So I would say commit to one budget budget set of um, battery operated tools and with a huge variety and one uh, nice set of uh, battery operated tools. So I went with DeWalt for the, my nice set and for my budget set. Um, so you don't have so many different batteries laying around. You have to maintain these and it becomes expensive. So for my budget set, I went with Ryobi because they're just about as cheap as they can be. And they usually get the job done. But for you always, there's certain tools you just kind of want a nicer, more refined, you know, set or that gets a lot more use. And for that, I went with DeWalt. I think if I had to pick, it'd be either probably DeWalt or Milwaukee. And so for absolutely necessary inflator, this plus minus jigsaw, I use it quite a bit, but I think it's, I would buy this again. Absolutely necessary blower. And here's my socket set. I've used this so many times, especially to do all the suspension work on my vehicle. Very necessary. This is, you cannot live without. Buy the most, the most lightweight compact version you can get that's brushless and get a good quality one. I use this to, for, and you want that, you want it to just, you want that fine um, control over it. You want it to be durable. I use this to build the swing set. I use this to put the suspension together. I've used this to put it, build furniture, you name it. This is absolutely necessary. And someone say, oh, should I get a impact driver like this or should I get a drill? You need both. Don't question, don't worry, you, you need both. And the reason is, is because drills will help with, you don't absolutely need it, but I think you should have both. Um, this, the drill can sometimes, if you're, if it gets caught in something, there's so much torque in these brushless things, it'll rip your arm off. And so I like the breakaway thing of this. It's a little bit safer and it has the impact function. So with every revolution, it'll hit 
and it'll tighten it more than this, the drill, hand drill can, without ripping your arm off. Or, um, and so here's the drill. It doesn't quite get as much use until I'm, unless I'm actually drilling something. I'll tell you something. If you're gonna buy a jack, floor jack, don't buy it until you have bought jack stands just to be safe. Don't ever, ever, ever use, and even with the jack stands, I had a set that just, just ratcheted like this. Um, and I went with one and I actually got rid of those and bought one with the pin so I could be absolutely certain when I'm actually jacking stuff, it's, it's correctly seated. And I needed, I needed this for my tire rotation, suspension work, changing the oil on, not my SUV, but in the minivan. This is absolutely a must if you have a floor jack. Because do, if you buy a floor jack and you haven't bought these first and you need to do a job, you're just going to think, oh, it's all right. I can get by. And then you're going to have a broken skull. This is a power washer, not very necessary. But if you live in somewhere that's salt and you're gonna keep your vehicle for a long time, you don't want it eaten up by salt, it's a must. And washing your vehicles at home. And then there's the ladder, absolutely necessary. Now for home ownership, if I was gonna get a, if I would have to recommend a ladder, it would be this one, the one that kind of folds up. Because this is, this becomes handy to where you can bring it into the house and get to high, high, get to places that are difficult to reach, and you can also use it to get reach gutters to clean them out. Um, so I would get this one. Bike I built. There's some bike specific tools that you will not have see in the tool set, but um, I will go over those bike tools maybe in a separate video. When I maybe I'll make a video about this bike I built. I really like this bike. That bike is a surly troll. And as I mentioned, radio control cars. Not a tool, but this is my batteries charging station. As I mentioned, I only wanted to stock a couple different type of batteries. This is for the lawn mowing equipment. And then Ryobi and DeWalt. And then for the batteries for the uh, radio control cars, that's it. So I don't have, it's only, only really four different battery types I come across charging other than the household stuff. All right, so I hope you found that useful, and uh, thanks for watching.